Welcome back. It's time to look at some data visualizations. Let's get into it. Here's our brief overview. We have a bunch of data visualizations on the menu for you today. We got bar graphs, histograms, box plots, line graphs, area graphs, scatter plots, a historical moment, some polar plots, and a quick note on visualizations in R. Data visualizations are paramount to getting the message across when it comes to statistics. Like having a number is great, but many times a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's look at a few of them. So first up on the menu, aside from a bunch of different serial brands, are bar graphs. Bar graphs are typically used for categorical data. The bars do not touch because they are distinct categories from each other, and they usually represent count, in other words frequency, or the relative frequency, which we've looked at before. So what information do we have here, and which serial is the best-selling serial? So we have categorical nominal data. There's different types of serial categories or brand names. And we have millions of dollars in the continuous ratio. And apparently Cheerios over here is our best seller by quite a margin. It's almost twice as popular or is twice as popular as the next most famous brand of Frosties. And now here we have histograms. Now you might be saying, well, they look exactly the same. The difference here is that histograms are used for continuous data, while bar graphs are for discrete or categorical data. So if we look here, we have a nice histogram of some normally distributed data. The only difference between these two is that one is the frequency or the count, and one is the relative frequency. All right, so here's another histogram. Here we have a few different things. What kind of information are we dealing with? What kind of variables? What do the colors represent? What kind of data is that? And which of the three categories has more variability? Take a moment to look at this. So here we have frequency, the number of songs over here. On the x-axis we have the word count, and then we have three distinct groups. Those are represented by color. So we have rap, rock, and country. So which of the three categories, rock, rap, or country, which one of them has the most variability? Basically, some of their songs have very few words, and some of their songs have a lot of words. There is a lot of difference in the average number of words each song has. So if we look at just the distribution of rap songs, we see that some songs have very few words, and some songs have over a thousand, maybe like Eminem's Rap God. But if we look at rock and country, there's much less variability. Some of them have zero or very few words, and at most, either one will maybe have 400 or 500 words. So their spread is much tighter. Next up, we have box plots. We've already looked at some of these when we were looking at the interquartile range, but just for a refresher, remember they give us median, the spread of the data, and outliers. They're also sometimes called box and whisker plots, because here is the box and here are the little whiskers. You need ratio or interval data, so something continuous, and categories are optional. We have two categories here to represent when this person had their notifications enabled and disabled and they were seen how many times they checked their phone a day. Here's a refresher for what all the different points mean. Way out here, these dots that are kind of stragglers, we call those outliers. Here, the first stick at the top, or the one furthest to the right if this was turned horizontally, are the top 25. The bar, or the line right in the middle of the box, is the median. The whole box itself is the interquartile range, or 50% of the data, and the very bottom sticks, or the sticks on the far left, if it was horizontal, are the bottom 25%. Next up, we got line graphs, and line graphs are really good for showing trends through time. So on the x-axis, we have time, and on the y-axis, we have the value of Bitcoin. So we see that it has been slowly, steadily going up with a few crashes here and there, but I think it's even higher than this at this point, but I don't know when you're watching this video. Maybe it's completely plummeted, or maybe our whole currency has gone to Bitcoin. Next up, we have area graphs. Now, if you were to take out all these areas, it would look very much still like a line graph, so they also show time. So on the x-axis, we have time. On the y-axis, we have our variable of interest, which is U.S. energy consumption. But now we're adding another component to this, which are these different areas. And this allows us to compare two or more quantities of different groups. So here, if we just look at this top line and we ignore all these little substratas, this is the average amount of fuel consumption, and we can see that it has steadily gone up as time has gone on. 
but we can get even more information and see which particular groups are contributing to most of our consumption. And of course it would be right now fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, petroleum, and then we start, we're starting to see some of the renewable energy and there's one little sliver here for nuclear energy. So area graphs are really good for showing change through time and comparing two or more quantities of different groups. Next up, we got scatter plots. Scatter plots are really good at showing the relationship between two continuous variables. So what kind of information do we have here and how many variables are we working with? Take a second, take a second. Pause me if you need to. All right, let's see. We have two continuous variables because that's what we need for a scatter plot. And here we have healthcare cost on the y-axis and on the x-axis we have life expectancy. We also have one more variable here. This is not always part of scatter plots, but you can add it if you want to. Here we also have the continents that are done by color, and that is categorical. So the different colors let you know what continent each of the countries is from, because here we are looking at the relationship between healthcare cost and life expectancy. And it looks like there's some sort of a positive kind of relationship that the more that you pay in healthcare costs, the longer you live. Hooray! Except there's one outlier. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? That's us. That, well, at least those of us who are in the U.S. right now. Yeah, uh, we could have a discussion on that some other time. But anyway, scatter plots really good to show the relationship between two continuous variables. Now let's have a quick moment to discuss zero on graphs. So I'm going to stand in front of this graph and pretend that it doesn't exist. And this is the graph that we're dealing with. This was presented in some news media outlet. And they're saying, no, our youth, they're not enrolling in college as much as they used to. What's happening? Well, let's look closely here. So here we have time and here are the enrollments rates. But look where it starts. Hmm, sketchy, sketchy. Now let's zoom out a little bit to actually start at zero. And look what's going on here. Does that look terribly alarming? Does it look as alarming as this one? Nope. So this is another example of how people will shift and manipulate data sometimes to maybe push their own agenda or get their particular message across. Now we've looked at a lot of different graphs here for a second. I think we need to take a little pause and have a historical moment. Our historical moment today, Florence Nightingale, also known as the lady with the lamp. She was known for being the founder of modern nursing, serving as a nurse and trainer of others in the Crimean War. In addition to saving lives directly as a nurse, Nightingale saved even more lives with her statistics. Florence Nightingale amassed a lot of data during the Crimean War to figure out what was the main cause of death of most British soldiers. At the time, most statistical work was presented in long tables like this one, and all the information is there, it's just not so quick to digest, and some of these tables can get huge. So Nightingale decided to make a special graph to get all of this information across at just a glance. And as a side note, the zymatic diseases are preventable diseases that are due to infection or contagious diseases. So here is her graph. May not look like much, but it speaks volumes. And if you have a moment, I would click on that link right there. It's a really cool animation of this. But what we have going on here is that each little piece of pie is a month during the time period during the war, and each wedge is the total amount of people who died in that month. Now, the most interesting part here are the colors. So the red area was deaths from gunshot wounds, which is, okay, a war-related death. The black areas are from accidents and other causes. Mm. So we have some of those. But what is this blue? Everything is mostly blue. <laughs> blue represents those deaths due to preventable diseases. There were a disproportionate number of disease-caused deaths relative to the number of deaths from actual war injuries, like being shot. So Florence thought, there's something going on here. This isn't just a pretty picture. Her irrefutable data and her ability to communicate those data through visualization revolutionized the hygiene and healthcare in hospitals. She saved more lives as a statistician technically than as a nurse by educating other healthcare professionals and by using this beautiful data.
And here is Florence Nightingale herself. Statistics is the most important science in the whole world, for upon it depends the practical application of every other science and every other art, the one science essential to all political and social administration, all education, all organization based on experience, for it only gives results of our experience. The data visualizations I've shown you here in this PowerPoint are just some of the most common, but are just a few of the many, 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 many different types of visualizations out there. R has many different tools to create visualizations, and one of the most powerful packages out there is called ggplot2. It is beyond the scope of this class, and I can't really cover it, but I highly encourage you to look into it. And for now, click on that link and see all the amazing different kind of data visualizations you can make in R. And I'll see you in the next one.